Hi, welcome to another episode of IFO Nightly Show Season 8. So for those of you who know me, I am currently a student majoring in arts and media and I've always been very curious as to what does it take to work in different positions in this very expansive field and what are the qualifications that one needs. So today we're going to meet with a guest that not only has experience but a lot of passion for this field and she'll share with us her experience, her anecdotes and most importantly her philosophy in working in arts and media and also design. This is IFO Nightly Show Season 8. We're gonna meet one of the most favorite faces of Ivo since Thamael Hado. Hado is known as a powerful woman in the Vietnamese fashion industry, graduating from the School of Visual Arts in New York and working as the creative director of a famous fashion magazine, Deb. She's always sets great challenges and overcomes them with her heart and talent in her profession. She also ventures into film industry as a production designer such as M. Vatik Raisa Lam Tio. In this episode, she's going to share about her career and her journey to become Hado. If you want to step into the creative industry, this episode is a must for you. Welcome back to another episode of IFO Nightly Show Season 8 Viva Student Life. So for this episode, we have a very special guest introducing us to the world of art and fashion. Here she is, her name is Hado, creative director at Deb Magazine and also a production designer for a lot of uh, movie sets. So Hado also belongs to a very important category for the show because you are a returning guest. Uh, I remember your first episode with us was when we were named Tam Ielts and it was in 2016. So what has changed since for you? Um. Yeah, that was a while ago. Was it 2016? Yeah. Um, I was invited by an old friend uh, who, who was uh, working on the show and uh, he said just come over, uh, you know, talk about work and it, it was actually a game show. Mm. Um, and then I came and uh, I don't remember because I never took the IELTS. <laughs> Back in my time, it was the TOEFL. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so it, it was fun. It was fun. Um, back then, um, I was not a mother. I am a mother now. I have a beautiful boy. He's four years old. Yeah. He's already four. He's already four. Um, yeah. yeah, the show was five years yeah, ago. Yeah, five years ago. Yeah, and um, my perspective has changed a lot mm -hmm. since then, and COVID happened, and mm -hmm. we all changed. Yeah, very drastically too. <laughs> yeah, it's like a reset of the mm -hmm. world's order. So, yeah, that, I've got some new news. Um, mm -hmm. I've worked on a couple of movies and a TV commercial and music videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you've been in the field for over fifteen years, and you worked in different, very different formats of media. So which one has been your favorite so far? Um, I, my background uh, is graphic design. I studied graphic design uh, at the School of Visual Arts in New York. Um, so for me, um, either it's magazine or it's a, an editorial uh, or it's a photo shoot or a TV commercial or a music video or even a movie, it's all um, 
a visual communication for me. I communicate to the world through the visuals and uh, tell stories with the visuals. With each of the project, I've learned a lot and um, uh, throughout the years, I've made a lot of acquaintances and uh, set up my crews and um, enhanced my skills. And, um, you know, a lot of it, uh, the skills can come from the art skills or the people management skills or just time management skills. So, um, you know, it, everything amassed into a collective knowledge and I'm learning every day still. Yeah, so maybe it's impossible to pick just one type of media yes, because yes. we are living in an age of multimedia. So I know of you through a lot of news pieces and a lot of articles reporting about uh, your career, but also of a new position that you have claimed recently, and that is of a production designer for a lot of big blockbuster movies. And recently, I believe you've just wrapped the filming of Em Va Jin, a movie that's going to be released uh, next year. So before we came onto the set here today, you described to me the position of production designer, even though it's a relatively new name into your list, long list of uh, positions, but it's not too new to you. So what's your take on that? Um, uh, a production designer, uh, the title is not new in the film industry. It's mm -hmm. been around since the creation of movies and um, um, it's a, a very vital role mm -hmm. um, but usually uh, overlooked by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, a production designer is uh, responsible for creating the actual, the physical look and feel of the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Scene by scene I will have to break it down mm -hmm. and uh, basically everything you see on the screen mm -hmm. is my work because mm -hmm. I put the things there. I, you know, the the, the chair you sit on, the mm -hmm. clothes you wear, the makeup. Uh, it all it all collectively um, tell a story. Uh, so basically, when you see something and when when you see a character in the movie, and then you believe that she belongs there. She, you believe her because the clothes she wears, mm -hmm. the makeup she wears, the set she's in, um, uh, uh, the prop she touches, everything works seamlessly together, uh, but also invisibly. Then my work is done, if you believe that she belongs there. So I had the opportunity to work in a movie before, and it's always been very magical to hear about the creative process of other creators on the movie because I feel like the movie is so different in the eyes of each different direct, uh, creator, and it's always an honor to hear about the process. A common understanding of some audience when they hear the word production designer is that the production designer is somebody who executes the vision of the director. But I myself think of production designers as somebody who has their own autonomy and their own ideas for the movie also and because they contribute such a big part in creating the meaning to the movie by creating visual elements. So when it comes to your work, do you feel like you execute another person's vision to their full potential or do you think you are also embedding part of your personality onto that work? See, this is a big uh, difference mm -hmm. uh, between the work I've done before with the magazine. Um, it's all, it was all me. It was very, the magazine for me, the, all the fashion shoots and all the editorials uh, that I did um, uh, have been very personal to me. Like, uh, you know, it's, you know, either an inspiration I got from the collection or uh, from my meeting, uh, from meeting a celebrity. Um, and then it was my personal take, uh, of course, with a crew, uh, it, uh, uh, you know, to create these visions. But uh, with a movie production, it's, it's a huge collaboration. Um, you know, it's, but first of all, it's, um, it's a director's story. So he has, he or she has the final say on certain things, but also, um, it's a collaboration. It's a huge collaboration. So everyone will contribute uh, their expertise, mm -hmm. um, you know, on on this on this movie. So 
um, you know, usually the, the working process for me when working on a movie would be, uh, of course, reading through the script, um, attending the casting. Mm -hmm. So I see um, how the characters uh, will gradually come to life through the uh, talent of the, the actors. Um, and um, usually after uh, everything, like the casting and the um, reading through the script, I will, I will come up with a general mood board uh, to show how I feel uh, about this movie, what kind of uh, visual elements, what kind of colors, what kind of mood and feel mm -hmm. that uh, I think suitable for this movie. Uh, and I will discuss with the director about the very vague, very broad um, look and feel mm -hmm. of this movie, whether it's going to be warm or cold or dramatic, or, uh, not, not like in terms of tonal, uh, per se, but it's about just about the colors and mood and feel mm -hmm. of the whole movie. Um, and then as we, as the project uh, moves on, um, we'll, we'll go into details. Uh, we'll break down the scene and we'll go into very detail, like very, very detail of, you know, from the uh, makeup and the costume to the nail color. Mm -hmm the character, uh, the props, very uh, yeah, very, very, very yeah. detailed because, you know, you think that these things don't matter, mm -hmm. but when you see everything on a big screen, you see so many mistakes. So. And it's so big too. Yeah, it's, yeah, so it's emphasized. And a movie is not like a music video. Uh, mm -hmm. A movie is, you know, it's, it's on screen and then it gets on Netflix. And it, it, for me, it's like, <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it just, it's just the life of it. Mm -hmm. that goes on forever. And so the virtual you, immortality of yeah, the production and too. Then, and then it's, it's there forever. And like if I make a mistake, which I have done so many, <laughs> um, they will stay there and it'll be like, I'll be like, oh my God, no, I, sh I should have, I could have, I, mm -hmm. I should have done differently, yeah. So uh, there you have it. That is Yehado's take on what it is, what it takes to become a production designer. And uh, up next is more on Yehado's philosophy behind her work as both a creative director and a production designer, and also of her own life as a very strong independent person. But right now, let's head to On the Go. Hello everyone, it's Mao Chum here and it's my first time on the go. Next on IFO Nightly Show. Hello there, my name is Huang Fat Chum. You might recognize me as the girl who did a English presentation in Miss Vietnam 2020. But I am not just a girl on high heels. I studied Japanese in middle school, did math specialized class in high school, went to study abroad on a whim, major in data science, and now working in communications. None of that connected, right? The point here is I love meeting new people and learning new things and just venturing into the uncharted water. So I am super duper excited to join the IFO family. So stay tuned to see me as your new IFO host on the go. I'll see ya. Hello everyone, it's Mao Chum here and it's my first time on the go. Today, I'll take you on a very, very special journey to a university that is so special because they have many, many labs we're gonna have an exciting and a bit thrilling journey here. I say thrilling, yes, because we are going to actually see the cadaver rooms. Could you already guess which university that's gonna be? That is the University of Medicine and Pharmacy at Ho Chi Minh City. Shall we? So on this journey with me today, we have a special friend, a tour guide with us. Ming, could you introduce yourself to the camera? 
Hello all viewers of IFO, my name is Wat Minh and I am a student at the University of Medicine and Pharmacy at Ho Chi Minh City. Thank you so much for being our tour guide for the day. And um, so you are a student at the University of Medicine and Pharmacy. What year are you in? I'm currently in sixth year with my major is medicine. Six years, is it uh, the, the last, the second to last, or are you about to graduate? <laughs> um, you can call me a senior if you like, so it okay. takes six years for a freshman mm -hmm. to become a newly graduate mm -hmm. doctor or also known as general practitioner. Mm. How many majors do we have in this school? Mm, there's a lot. Medicine, mm, dentistry, pharmacy, I cannot name them all. I see. And you are going to be a general doctor. Yes. That takes six years of practice. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice for high schoolers who might be interested in, uh, you know, maybe be a med student in the future? Mm, so I suppose that all med students mm -hmm. are diligent and thorough. Mm -hmm. High schoolers need to be well aware of that. Also, there's one thing that few mentioned, which in my opinion is of equal importance to diligence, mm -hmm. and that is the mentality. Mm. Through six years in med school and through working as a health profession in COVID-19, mm -hmm. I believe that the doctor's responsi responsibilities are not always easy to carry mm -hmm. in order to share the burdens and share the pain with patients, a good med student or a good doctor should maintain a, um, a warm heart and a cool mm. head even in critical situations. So my piece of advice is that high schooler, if you are gonna apply to med school, mm -hmm. think about it carefully. If you are able to endure hardship mm -hmm. and have the ability to stay and be a companion with sick people, then medicine is an open choice for you. Otherwise, it's okay if you're not ready to, but please reconsider all of your decision before making a final choice. Indeed, it's, it is a very important and noble profession indeed. And so as a senior, last year student, you must have a lot of spots in the university that you can show us around, right? Mm -hmm. Please take us away. Okay, let's go. Okay. Um, so there's a virtual reality room. Mm -hmm. And let me show you one special room. Okay. That have a lot of models which may interest you. The advanced training room. We learn how to listen to heartbeats mm -hmm. and lung sounds here with a lot of models. So welcome to one of the biggest of our lab. Mm. It's, it's very spacious with a lot of machines and bottles mm. over here. Okay, so all of the machines here are very advanced mm -hmm. and they're used for study or science purposes only. Um, for example, let me show you. We have a sodium chloride solution here mm. and I'll show you how to use the stirring machine. Stirring machine? Yes, it's you to stir liquids. So the first step is I'm gonna use this. This is called a magnetic fish mm -hmm. and put it into the liquid. Okay. That does not look like a fish, but but and it's you say still so. called a magnetic fish. <laughs> yes. And then I'll turn this on. As I as I turn this on. Uh, the fish started to spin and it stirred the liquids. Ooh, look at it goes, it just swirl all around with the water. But uh, today we only have uh, sodium chloride in here, so nothing is going to happen in the bottle. Yeah, so mm, I think scientists are going to do a lot more than just sodium chloride, <laughs> but did. right now we just testing the machine, right? Yes. I think that you're gonna love it, so stay tuned, you guy. Let's see what the next spot is gonna be. Let's go. Let's go. Ta đều sinh ra với những số phận khác nhau, những cái ngày muốn vươn mình trước trời gió đầy khát khao. 
và chẳng cần cậu phải nói một lời nào mình vẫn cảm nhận được một trái tim đầy hoài bão háo hức và nôn nao Welcome back from on the go and let's continue our conversation. So because season eight is especially dedicated to motivate um, university students and high school students to kind of dive into exploring their passions and learning about their fields of interest. So what was the first thing that caught your eye when you considered joining your profession today? Um, I always know that I uh, wanted to do art because mm -hmm. um, since I was a child, I, I loved drawing and painting and you know doing all these silly things, <laughs> the dolls and making doll houses mm -hmm. from paper. Um, and then I was um, I was studying uh, and training to uh, take the entrance university to the fine arts university ah. in Saigon but I failed that exam it still hurts <laughs> that's very, very surprising much. um it, 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 it's very difficult it was mm -hmm. uh, it was a, a, an academic um, mm -hmm. uh, way of learning art so mm -hmm. I didn't suit um, yeah. that way mm -hmm. um, back then and uh, but I also heard a lot of people fail that exam it's <laughs> it's a very it's a highly exclusive yeah institution. It's, uh, it's a very uh, difficult school to get in mm -hmm. um, so after I failed that was my biggest <laughs> failure the first and biggest failure mm -hmm. um, in the early life uh, after I failed the exam uh, my mom sent me to the US to study ah. um, so in the first two years uh, I was only studying uh, general arts because back mm -hmm. then we didn't have uh, drawing classes mm -hmm. like we do now and mm -hmm. there was no um, you know YouTube or you can learn by yourself um, so when when I went to the States and study uh, drawing and painting and sculpture and um, computer arts uh, for the first two years and then uh, I went on and major in graphic design uh -huh. uh, yeah, so um, just, you know, being in uh, New York and being uh, a student at the School of Visual Arts in New York was like a dream come true, you know, mm -hmm. as a young, as a, uh, as a young girl, uh, you know, being in a big city, really like, you know, everything they said in that song was the... Uh, um, concrete, where, jungle. concrete jungle, jungle where, where dreams, dreams are, are made, made of. of. It's, it's true. <laughs> you know, I heard that song a few years after I graduated, I'm mm -hmm. like, that's me. That's, that's you. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I mean, you know, you you in a big you in a big city. The school mm -hmm. is it's just a small factor uh, mm -hmm. of the whole uh, inspiration that you got from the city. Mm -hmm. You know, the museum, uh, the, the metro station, the, you know, the people around you, all the artists, all the you know, basically everyone. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just inspire you to be. Um, an art person mm -hmm. um, and after that um, you know after uh, graduating from from school um, I uh, the first few years was difficult because mm -hmm. you know uh, New York was very competitive for me mm -hmm. um, I was interning at this uh, magazine in New York and then I joined an ad agency also in New York um, um, it was very difficult mm -hmm. uh, but it was very inspiring at the time too. Mm -hmm. um, and then I always felt there was always an inkling in me mm -hmm. um, that told me to follow this whole communication design or media mm -hmm. or magazine. I didn't know what it was back then, but um, you know, so I moved back home uh, to Vietnam and I worked at an ad agency and uh, I won an award and that kind of encouraged me mm -hmm. to spurred you on yeah to, <laughs> it, it was a big break for me mm -hmm. um, to give me uh, it gave me more confidence and um, so I went on and then I tried uh, at a new position at the at that magazine and mm -hmm. then uh, my life's not the same anymore mm. yeah. so 
if I may, it, it feels like your entire journey in art and design, it has been like a very long-lived passion that, you know, was actualized by uh, learning and experience, but it was always within you and it always was something that you deeply wanted. And that is very deeply inspiring to me because how often do we pursue something so vigorously, right? I don't think it's something that happens many times in a person's life. I think for me, it's um, like I have these images in my mind. Um, either I have to draw it out, either I have to write about it. Because um, I heard a, a really good saying that say, how do you know uh, what you think until you see it. So I'm a visual person. Mm -hmm. So if I think about something, I have to somehow visualize it or actualize it. Mm -hmm. um, for example, when I think about a character in a script, I would do everything mm -hmm. to execute, uh, to realize that character. Um, put her in the right costume, try to experiment with different outfits and makeup and hair. It's the whole process for me. It's, it's the learning and also the enjoying part of it. Uh, Sometimes I look at the final products and I may or may not like it, but I love, I love the process. The, the very difficult and, and exhausting process of of working on it that's for me it's it's not the final product that i enjoy it's the process and people say trust the process yes trust it because you learn from it and that's the whole enjoyment from it you know you work with your crew you discover what everyone is good at and then together you make something wonderful and you know the process you you make friends or enemies from that, from that whole process. So of for course, me, it's it's course. I enjoy it very much. Mm. Yeah, and it's true. You know how people say when you talk about something that you are truly in love with, your eyes light up, and I see that in you. And honestly, I think when dreamers and think and visualizers they actualize their vision, the world is all the more richer for it. Yeah. So thank you so much for bringing into the world your creative vision and making us see the wonders that you see in your mind. Mm -hmm. So that is our second talk. And right now, let's return to On The Go. So this is the place I've been talking about, the anatomy department. Anatomy is a study of human bodies and how the location and the, and the structures of each organ affects each other. And in the anatomy department, there's also a cadaver surgical training unit. In anatomy, medical students learn on models and also cadaver, which means dead corpse. And some of our teachers actually say that the dead corpse are one of our biggest teachers because thanks to them we may have the materials to study anatomy and know how the human's body looks like. The room that I want to take you to is the experiential operating room. This is used to you know show the operations to learners and also to practice how to do surgery. So normally when you step in a room like this, you're gonna wash your hand right here. Yeah, this is where we wash our hands and um, in medical study, there's a technique called sterilized washing hands. So it lowered the bacteria in our hands mm -hmm. and ensure the safety for patients before wearing glove. Mm -hmm. After wearing sterile glove, surgeons then step inside of this sterile zone. I see it's, it's marked blue. Uh, so yes, is that the is zone? Yes, painted in blue. Most Purposely. of the thing in the surgery and surgeon room is painted in blue. Do you know why it's in blue? Um, yes, of course. Um, it's, you know blood is red, right? Uh -huh. So blue help um, surgeon's eye to feel better and then they can work better in 
like all rat situation? Very, very interesting fact. Today I learned thanks to you. <laughs> and so, so please look at the surgery system. Mm -hmm. You can see the lighting system here. This is a very important part of the system. It uh, creates light but not heat for better visions for surgeons to mm. look better. So it's not too hot. It's yeah. not going to affect the, mm -hmm. the operation down here. Mm -hmm. How MD. much time does it take you to really, you know, like digest all of these knowledge and t fully absorb it in? Um, you know, to be honest, we learn it through time, mm -hmm. through practicing on cadaver and through looking at these figure, mm -hmm. um, you know, years by years. But at UMP, students get to do a lot of practice, a lot of hands-on experience, not only on the, um, the Sam body that we just saw upstairs, mm -hmm. but also on the cadavers, on each other, and then we get to see what goes on in the operating room from the camera in this machine, right? Mm -hmm. I think uh, this is one of the most advanced um, operating room in the southern region, is it? Um, yes, of course. It's I think that is the most advanced one in the south of Vietnam. That's very interesting. Thank you, Ming, for being such a great tour guide today and being a friend that shows us around the University of Medicines and Pharmacy in Ho Chi Minh City. I have personally learned a lot and I hope you did too. We get to experience a different kind of lab rooms and experimental learning that the med students get to go through throughout their practice and throughout their career of a med student. Um, Ming? I hope you have more insight of a student life today mm -hmm. and know how our math student do our hands-on experience. Um, thank you for coming today and thank you for being a great host. Mm -hmm. I hope to meet you again one day. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Ming. Thank you to the University of Medicines and Pharmacy at Ho Chi Minh City. We have learned so much today and we can't wait to see you in the next episode. That's it for IFO on the go of today. Back to you, studio. See you again. Bye. Welcome back once again from On The Go. And right now, we get to the fun part, right? We get to discover the wild side, the, 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 the bright and promising huddle within her university. So was it fun for you staying in school and learning everything? Um, it wasn't at first. Mm -hmm. um, I was one of the first uh, students to go study in the States, um, uh, not on a scholarship base. Uh, it, was, it was the late uh, 1990s, uh, early 2000. Um, very difficult and miserable uh, at first because I didn't speak a lot of English. Mm -hmm. um, and um, you know, I, I never, I never lived abroad mm -hmm. before as a you know a teenager. You know, moving from um, living with your family to your own in in a, in a student uh, house, it was it was very difficult. So basically, uh, the first few years for me, the first first year uh, was just to get accustomed to mm -hmm. the American way of living. And the people, uh, my friends in school, they were so good. I mean, they 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 came from you know all all parts of the world. They all wanted to come here mm -hmm. and achieve something. And mm -hmm. I remember the my Korean friends. They just they they were so excellent. I mean, I keep asking them, why you go to school? You're ready to go to work already. Your work's mm -hmm. so good. And. Um, yeah, especially when you you uh, study arts, it's it's not just about your skill. It's about um, your your knowledge of culture and your life experience. Everything helped, and and it was like a lot of catching up for me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I never watched the shows that they were watching, like Friends or yeah, but Friends. Was everybody still on. loves Raymond. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm, I I would never. I was never into politics. Mm -hmm. And I was never into these deep talk about uh, philosophy or politics, and that was so much catching up for me. And mm. um, but it was like every day, my I, I was such a nerd. <laughs> my uh, 
people would think, okay, art student, they go hang out at coffee shop, they smoke a lot of pot and you know, party. But I was such a nerd. I would go to the, my favorite place was the uh, New York Public Library. Ah. I would go there, I would go through the whole collection of Dover um, collection, the, the clip arts. Back uh -huh. then they have this, back then they had this clip arts in CD-ROM. Yeah. People yeah. in this generation, they don't know what it's like, <laughs> but I, I looked through the whole collection of uh, books with the CD-ROMs at the back, and then I looked through all these motifs and um, patterns, and I copied the patterns by hand, or I would oh, go wow. to the uh, uh, museum. Uh, I love the mat. It's still, it's still the my favorite place in the world mm. anytime. But mm. yeah, and and I just, I was just, I was just stupid. <laughs> you know, I I love being stupid because there was so much to see. Like yeah. there was no, not one boring day in New York. Mm. You don't care how small and dirty your apartment is because <laughs> you only go back there to sleep yeah, but the world streets, yeah the yeah. world is your oyster you just mm. you just go on the street and you know, there's so much going on you go to the subway station you see a guy singing and dancing you get on the subway you see people reading books uh, that's my favorite part just mm. people watching mm. you know and then you get off different stops and you look at uh, you know, just this new way, this new uh, art museum or mm -hmm. show. So there's just so much going on, and mm -hmm. I just, I just love that. I just love that vibrant and creative um, energy mm -hmm. that New York had, and I think I learned a lot from from the city. Yeah. Yeah. So a very bright-eyed, dedicated student that was like learning from all walks of life, not yeah. just in school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a school in graphic design. And it was placed in one of the most crowded, one of the most competitive cities, no less. Yeah. Like, was it a rigorous program? Did you enjoy your process of, you know, learning I, the actual content? I wish my school was a little bit more rigorous. Because oh. looking back, I, I still don't know what I, what I learned from, <laughs> from that school. Like what I did in those five years I was uh. there. Um, my school was very, how do you say, liberal in the mm. way that you have to be very active. You have to create your own curriculum. But some of the teachers that I picked were so like, you know, out of this world in a way mm. of teaching. Yeah. Um, I was so used to uh, the way uh, people study in Vietnam, you mm. know, the teachers say, and then you say something and then you take note and then you do a lot of exercise uh, homeworks uh, but but back then i remember there was one class um it was graphic design 101 like mm -hmm. the very basic 101 uh, i remember because the class uh, we only met for uh, once a week for mm -hmm. one hour um oh, yeah really? only once a week um and the teacher would say okay bring a yoga mat because <laughs> we're gonna meditate in class that is yeah and then bizarre. we meditate and then we meditated in class and then the teacher would say here uh here's your exercise uh in design he would mm. give us a square mm -hmm. like a four by four inch square um a word mm -hmm. like a word uh that was i think uh like the nefertiti the the Nefertiti. Egyptian uh, Nefertiti yeah. the the uh, Egyptian, Egyptian queen, oh, um, queen, one ant, mm -hmm. and one elephant, mm -hmm. and three colors, uh, white, uh, which is the color of the paper, white, black, and green. Mm. Yeah. So within all the, those elements, you have to come up with fifty five zero composition. Fifty. That is an overwhelming prompt. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, I was like, excuse me, teacher, what are you teaching us? We just finished meditating. Yeah, exactly. And now what? Uh, I don't even know how to use Illustrator. <laughs> I was like, that's your job. I, I'm not here to teach you how to use a software. Mm. I'm here to teach you how to think. Mm. So you have one week to execute 50, five zero um, yes. exercises. And then I came back. I think the first two or three 
uh, composition that I did, everything was inside the box, this four by four square box. Mm -hmm. and, you know, the ant was always smaller than the elephant, and there was only one ant, one elephant. You know, you play with the composition inside. But after four or five composition, mm -hmm. I started to get bored. I was like, okay, I, I'm just going to forget everything. I make the ant bigger than the elephant. Mm -hmm. I'll make uh, you know the and they stay outside the box mm -hmm. and they just 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 by the 48th or the 50th composition I already make crazy croppings and crazy ways of you know dealing with this mm -hmm. element so um, I realized um, there's more than one way of teaching and there's several ways of learning and the most important thing is you have to spend time mm. within yourself. Um, be bored. Be be clueless. Be stupid. Um, it was it was one of the first thing that I that I learned. Um, mm. So later I apply in my advertising field. Like if you have a brief from a client, you can't just come up with three ideas. Come up with one hundred. Mm. <laughs> you know, just Very write powerful. it down. Right out, right out, right out, right out. Mm -hmm. And the client, you know, and execute 10 and then present five. The client will pick three. And we always go back to like the first idea that we love so much. <laughs> that is, yeah. that is yeah. what happens. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> how, what happened. But I, I love the process, just mm -hmm. the process, because mm -hmm. the process is all there is. Welcome back, and it is time for another IFO challenge. So every episode, we pose a small challenge to our guests, but I have a very relaxed challenge for you, just to Please. get to know you a bit more. So this challenge is named Five Items Challenge. Every category I give you, you give me five names, five words, anything you'd like that, you know, is true to you. Okay. So the first category is favorite New York food. Five. Mm -hmm. uh, pizza, the big slice. Mm -hmm. I used to get those on Bedford Avenue just when I got off the L train. Mm -hmm. um, Chinese food, two dollars. Everything in a box for two dollars in Chinatown. <laughs> um, burrito, mm -hmm. um, hot dog. Very iconic. And. Uh, I don't know, like a, a donut with coffee for two dollars. Oh, also two dollars for breakfast. Sounds like a very good breakfast. Yes. Um, next category: five movies that made you cry. I have only one. It's Elf. Elf? Yes, it's a Christmas oh. movie. You should watch it. And oh, actually, another one. Like the first ten minutes of mm. Up. The animation. Oh no! I actually like. I, I feel like crying when I talk about that movie. Yeah, just listening to the music like yeah. gets you going. But only right? that first ten, ten minutes. minutes. Yeah. yeah. So uh, next category: five fashion faux pas. Five. Mm -hmm. I have too many. Oh. <laughs> um, the Birkenstock. I don't know why mm. people wear them. Ugly uh, sneakers. I still don't understand why people wear them. Mm -hmm. White, ugly, old 80s sneakers. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. The uh, the hat, the bowler hat. Some of the hat that. Mm -hmm. Bowler hat. Yeah, the bowler hat. Um, anything plastic. Mm, yeah. Very interesting choice. Anything plastic. Mm -hmm. It was a very interesting time in the fashion world. <laughs> okay, so that is it. That That's is it. three questions, five items with Hado. And that is IFO Challenge completed. And that has been the amazing Hado for today's episode. Once again, thank you so much for coming for onto the show. Me. Not once, but twice. <laughs> and hopefully we'll get to see you in the future also. And that has been another fun episode with IFO Nightly Show. Em còn so đúng không chị? Cờ do đúng không? Yeah, hơi ngân luôn, mà sắp xong rồi. That was quick. 
em em lại bị đứt rồi ok tiếp cứ cứ nói đi nha why they're not cutting. Thank you. Đi đi đâu này. Mình cứ đi thôi. Ừ, okay.